Asalaamu As Alaikum, this is Dr. Dean for another video on parenting in the 21st century. So what is happening? Right now what we have is a mental health crisis. Over 10% of Muslim youth have one or another kind of mental health concern, issue, diagnosis, uh, whether it be ADHD, low self-esteem, depression, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, and many, many other types of mental health issues. Now, this is in the same proportion as the general population, so it's no different. One of the key areas I always talk about is how we think that because we're Muslim, we're immune to these problems or they do not affect us. But actually, we're no different and our concerns that youth have are very similar to, to other youth. So, it just shows that the same environment, the same films, the same TV, the same social media, the same cartoons as they grow up, the same songs, everything is impacting the youth. Um, and so th the results are the same. Uh, and this is what we really need to wake up to as a community because we're not doing that. So uh, I'll give you an example. I went to deliver a workshop and usually after a workshop we ask the youth about their private problems, uh, individual problems in confidentiality. So we'll say, look, fill in a random piece of paper and write down your problems. We tell them to write in different colored pens, change your handwriting so nobody can find out what they wrote. And they really come out with really, really shocking um, things that they have to say. And here are some of the screenshots you can see here as I speak. And you'll see that you know, we have young sisters in hijabs who are cutting themselves underneath, you know, their shirts and hiding their, uh, you know, the marks and the scars. You've got young men who are thinking of, of, you know, suicidal thoughts, thinking of dying, and wanting to die. These are Muslim youth, you know, from practicing Islamic families and other families. And this is something we never think about, but it is growing. The problem is growing. And I want to talk a bit about what kind of situations I've seen and what we can do about it. Obviously, I can't solve the whole problem or offer you all the solutions as it's on a case-by-case -case scenario and situation, but what I can say is there are some general rules of what we can do for their emotional and physical uh, well-being. So, in terms of what I said before in the previous video about communication, that is key to knowing what is going on. And I've noticed a lot of parents do not know what's going on and sometimes it's our fault, sometimes it's not our fault, it's just kids don't want to express themselves so they just feel they're not comfortable. So recently I had uh, a young uh, a boy and at high school and he had a lot of issues in terms of not being comfortable at home with expressing himself, telling his parents about his problems that he was having at school. He was stressed about exams, he was stressed about his friends and he had bullying issues, he had um, issues of low self-confidence and self-esteem and the family didn't even know about this. It was, it was when we did the survey and he, he wrote down what his problems were that realized that um, he just needed some attention from the parents in terms of like helping him to, 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 to build relationships with his friends, be confident about him being a Muslim. He was in a, a school where there were few Muslims so he was, wasn't very confident about his faith he would hide his faith and sort of not talk about Islam or not pray at school. Um, and also, he had confidence about his uh, lack of confidence about his looks. And this is um, one of the emotional concerns I have. Uh, ten years ago, when we did surveys with Muslim young Muslim girls, teenage girls, and older about their self-image and their self-worth in terms of their body image, their looks. Seventy percent of Muslim girls said they're not happy with their bodies and their image. And now, recently, uh, it's gone up to 90%. So 9 out of 10 Muslim girls are not happy emotionally about their own physical body, their looks, their image, body image. This is uh, a pandemic, and we're, what are we doing about it? We're not doing anything about it. That, that's, that's where we are right now. So mental health is a key issue. Our girls need a lot of attention and support because they live in a world of, also the boys, live in a world of celebrities that are, um, you know, showing all this uh, glitz and glamour and a fake life, photoshopped images, filters. We've got good looking people and they're aspiring to be like these celebrities who themselves, many of them are depressed and, uh, you know, coming out with mental health concerns themselves. So 
Are they really the role models that we want? So we need to really look for signs if our young people, our youth, not talking to us anymore, not communicating, or just brushing off things, saying, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I've got no problems. Or if they say, I have no problems, it usually means they do have a problem. Um, so it's about not trivializing their problems. So they do say something, or oh, I'll just grow up. And sometimes, yes, they need to grow up. We have, that's another issue where our kids are not maturing enough, or uh, as, I, as I call it, kidults. So young men who are still like kids, still immature mindset. So that is an, another concern. But the first stage is to actually recognize that what they're saying, there's always a reason behind mental health. So we need to look at those reasons and, and see how we can, we can help them. But that's only going to happen if we can build trust. Uh, so I'm just drinking some lemon um, and ginger tea. So if we can build that trust, and that trust is definitely not there right now. And most of our youth are not talking to us. So to build a trust, it's about a two-way thing. And one of the really good ways of doing this is you tell your youth, your kids, about your life, problems you had, stories from your childhood, stories from your teenagers, and be honest with them. You know, if you fancied a girl when you were 15, uh, why do we think that our, our kids are not going to have crushes on people? So there's emotional baggage, there's things that they're going through and no one to talk to. We never talk to our daughters and sons about their first crush. They are going to like somebody one day, it's natural. Uh, Yusuf al Islam had a dilemma, we know about this in Surah Yusuf. And we're not helping them through the crush. And many, many kids ask this question about, what do I do about my first crush? And there's no answer in the community, no answer from the mosques, from the parents, from the imam. Nobody's answering these questions. So they're living through it, asking friends, asking people on social media for advice, following their favorite vloggers and YouTubers, and they're telling them what? Just do whatever you want. Fulfill any desire you have, no inhibitions. And uh, these are the kind of things that are really impacting their emotional welfare and, and being. So spending time together, and trying to see if there are any signs of worrying uh, or a concern, withdrawal, switching off, erratic behavior, getting angry, and then seeking help, so counseling, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and other ways of, 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 of working through this. Get someone else they might know that they trust rather than yourself, someone they respect and trust, maybe a young person or someone that they really want to talk to rather than yourself or get them to write it down, write the problem down. If they can't speak to you about it, they should be able to write it down. If they're not talking to you about growing up, talking about adolescence to adulthood, then the parenting is wrong. That's all I can say for now, and we'll continue next time, inshallah, uh, talking a bit more about mental health and emotional concerns. So thank you for listening, subscribe to the channel, and inshallah, I'll see you again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.